On this episode of Pedalbox, we're working on the Ultimate Hairdresser's car, a turbocharged MX-5, and we're swapping out some Coney shocks for some Moister R adjustable coilovers. Today we're going to be working on everyone's favourite hairdresser's car. We've got our patron Iddy's Mazda MX-5 here in NC that we're going to put some nice new coilovers on. It's already got some trick suspension, it Coney adjustable shocks and bits and pieces, but they're not very easy to tweak around and it's neither great at track use nor on the road. So we're going to put these in, which hopefully will do a lot better at both on top of the existing mods. It's already pretty well built. Uh, hairdresser's car it may be, but it does have a very, very, very nice hairdryer under the bonnet courtesy of Garrett. Uh, so that's one nice big upgrade that's already on it. It's got big brakes, so we're just kind of rounding off the whole package. It's got power, it can stop. Now we're going to make it turn a bit better. Now we've got the car in the air, we can see what we've got underneath. So this is a Coney shock with a BR spring on it. Now I'm not sure what the spring rate is on these, but it was fitted when the turbo conversion was done. And it's actually not big brakes, but it is a set of operated pads. These are the standard NC brakes and calipers that are on here. So we're going to pop this out, which is one bolt onto the lower arm, which goes in through the bottom here and three studs on the top. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the best way to do this is going to be, so we're going to start unbolting things and see how far this will hang down. There you go. Oh, that's the way. So one thing you have to do is take out these two bolts from the top of here, and that releases the upper swing arm. But that doesn't help you get the bolt out of the bottom. You need a crowbar or something to pry down and jiggle it out, which is a little easier said than done when you have a little camera blocking your way. But that is the last bolt out from the bottom end of the car. There we go. So that sits in nicely and you can see the bottom end of the shock is now nice and loose. So we'll undo the three bolts at the top and see how this is going to kind of finagle its way out from the bottom of here. Right, so that's the top end released. Now we can see how this wants to pry off. You can see it just trying to pop down. Just not quite playing ball. Ah, we should probably also try and release that somehow so it's not just going to shatter but might just go around. There we go, that's out through there. Now all I need is to release... Why is this not going? It's off. Why are you not coming off? There we go, it's going now. So that was a bit of a struggle because one of the threads was just holding on the strut brace that goes between the towers, but Flat blade screwdriver, just tweaked it ever so slightly and it all came out really, really easy, which is good news. And then this should just rotate out under here and there we have it. So this is the old Coney shock and now we can put in the new shiny one, which is a bit lighter as well, which is quite pleasant. Uh, this just has to sort of thread down through the upper arm, ideally without hitting the paintwork, which is always beneficial when you're doing this. There we go. And if you don't take the arm off completely, it can be done. You just kind of slide it around and in and make sure you have it the right way round for inside and out. So now you can use the jack to lift the hub up. The lower arm will push on the cradle at the bottom of the shock and push the studs up into the top of the engine or in the engine bay, you wind those on, lower this down, and then bolt it back up. Now we've got the front of the car done, we can move on to the back, and this mounts a little bit differently. This one bolts in from the underside and from the top. There's one retaining bolt on the bottom here, which is fairly small, and then two much bigger bolts on the top are actually mounted. This one just holds it in place so that you can move it around, and there's one big bolt that goes into the back of the hub on the inside of here. To get it off, you still need to remove the upper arms, much the same as the front with the wishbone, and it's just two big 17 bolts. And a nice big breaker bar should just crack them really easily. And then they just 
gently turn out with the spanner. The real one's much easier to get out because you can get a rattle gun on it and it comes apart nice and simply. And then once the bolt is out, you can pull both of these through. So after that, you need to get the bolt off the very back here, which holds the shock on. And again, the best bet for that is a nice big impact gun. And that takes that bolt off. It has got a kind of funny shaped washer on it, which fits nicely into the back. All right, so that's all the bolts on this end. Now we'll jump into the back of the car and grab the two bolts off the top and then slide this out and down. So in the back of the car on the left side, there's this big metal plate that protects a bunch of the electronics and a few other bits and pieces from anything rattling around in the boot. Now this is only on the left of the car, not the right side. So these two nuts are all we need to undo because we've already taken the retainer off from the underside, which might come back to haunt us in a minute, but we'll see if we can get these ones out, bottom of the body. So now I've got the inside undone, we can push this off the back of the hub here, and if everything works out right, this should come out relatively easily. If you're doing this, take the drop link off the back. It makes life an awful lot easier. I don't think I actually have the right spanner on me, so I'm gonna fight this quickly again and see if I can win. No, I can't. No. Damn it. So to take the drop link off, you need a 5mm Allen key, ideally on a wrench, and a box spanner on the nut. Hopefully not rounding off the Allen bolt, which might have just happened there slightly. So maybe we're not going to take that off. Maybe we are just going to fight this out. So this is the problem with the Kony Shock. It is extremely tall, and when we compare it to the new one, you'll see what I mean. But there is an enormous bell, which has been formed across the top of here, that sits up through this mounting point and it's extremely difficult to get down without undoing everything. So this is the Kony with the BBR spring on it and this is the Meister R. Now you can see the huge difference in height here between the two. So this one fits in so much easier than this for obvious reasons because it's so much easier to get this through without the massive um, formed aluminium bell on the top. So we can pop this in and start bolting it up. Now from the bottom it's dead easy, you just drop this down, pop it up through there, and then the little retaining screw goes through into the bottom. And as soon as that started to thread, you can start trying to put everything else together. So that's now just held onto the end on the inside there. The two bolts can go back in the inside, as can the panel, which we took out to get into both of those bolts. But down the bottom here, these two suspension arms need to go in a, in a specific order. If you don't, you will end up having a massive fight to try and get it in, and then you'll have to take this arm back off and redo it. So this arm towards the front of the car needs to go in first, which I may have even screwed myself on, even as we are just here. So that one just fits around the bracket and that one has to go in first because you can't lift it up through the bottom. Whereas the rear arm, you can just pivot into place perfectly and it's really nice and easy to fit round, assuming you don't manage to get it on the wrong side of your ABS wire. Now I've got the shocks installed, we can put all of the trim back into the boot and there's bits of plastic that go all the way around the inside and that obviously means you can't reach the adjustment knobs on the top of the shocks. However, these ones have these really neat little extensions. So they've just got some set screws. This sits onto the top of the knob on the shock, like that. And then this can be directed through and you just take a tiny little hole and poke it through your piece of plastic. So these fit really, really well. These are about 20 pound extra or something in that region. So now with that fastened in place, this will turn the adjuster on the top of the shock and you can change it without having to pull your boot apart, which is a really neat idea. We've got the car back down on the ground now and it looks really good. We adjusted the spring so it sits all the same height all the way around. It is really nice. It's probably gonna settle out a little bit though when it starts driving around some. And because it's starting to get dark, we're probably not gonna be able to look at it much more this evening. 
It is going to the track soon, however. It's going to go to Llandau in Wales. So hopefully we'll get a bit of video on that sent to us from Dave and we can put it on the end of this video. Thanks very much to our friend and patron Dave for bringing his car over so that we could video fitting on the Meister R coilovers to his MX-5. We've got more content coming up on our fleet of cars soon and Chris is going to be back for more than just an intro very, very soon. For now, let's enjoy a hot lap of this 270 horsepower turbocharged MX-5 on track at Llandau in Wales. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, just search Pedalbox Show on YouTube and if you'd like to support us more you can check out our merchandise at shop.pedalbox.show and if you want to support us directly check out patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and you can become a patron of the channel for as little as one dollar. We appreciate everybody's help and we hope you enjoy watching.